Welcome to the CIA Cosmic Intelligence Agency's next monthly report. Um, I'm Julia Simmers, Agent 12, and today I'm joined by a very special agent over on the other side of the world in New York, um, Mr. Michael Luton, um, who is our also Agent 111. Welcome, Michael, and thanks for joining me. I am 111. It's uh, nice to be here and very nice of you to do this. Uh, no problem. Yeah, well, we started, Andrew and I started about two months ago, and um, we know how, how much our viewers and fans love to connect with the agents, not just through articles and Facebook posts. So it's about, um, you know, hearing us speak and seeing our faces, although we can't see your face today. You're just a green phone icon, but that's okay. Well, we're connecting on my phone. That's fine. So yes, yeah, so we're we're we joined we're joined up today to talk about the month of Virgo, um, and you know, gosh, the you know I'm looking at a chart at the moment of um, the beginning of this month. So you know what we can see here is is a stellium in Virgo, um, Jupiter and Mercury connected with Venus. And of course, the um, the looming Saturn and Mars conjunction, um, which is actually well, the, the loom, you know, the Mar the Mars Saturn conjunction as we're speaking on this is happening right at this very moment when we're speaking. That's right. But, yes, the, yeah. it, but the eclipse that follows it in the early days of September will bump right back into the point where the Mars Saturn happened. And Mars will be a little bit further on. So the acuteness of the Mars Saturn will have really passed. And the lunation will hit Saturn very strongly. But the Mars will thankfully have passed. But it's been a very strong conjunction. Mainly because Mars went retrograde at 8 degrees Sagittarius. And then it conjoined Saturn at 9. So this has been long in coming for many, many months. And it's a very dangerous conjunction, as everyone knows. Oh, there are a lot of us that say it's wonderful and it's the time to do the impossible. And Mars Saturn does allow you to work with the impossible, but it's also a very dangerous conjunction and a lot of dangerous things can happen. And I think one of the things that we like to see about Virgo is that it learns how to cope. And I've been saying for months, that the Mars-Saturn conjunction, which is no question about it, it can be evil. When something is in Sagittarius, it always shows you that you do have options. Even if they are narrow and they're not, and they're strict. The fact that the conjunction took place and is taking place in Sagittarius, in my view, gives you some options. What do you think? Um, yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, the next picture that I've got is um, is a, a whole bunch of arrows being shot out into the sky and um, images always tell so much of the story as well. So it's, it's a bit of the wildness that is the Sagittarius, you know, where are these where are we shooting to? Where are we heading to? Um, this conjunction is, of course, square Neptune. And, yeah, it's, it's a real sort of signature of wildness. Um, and also um, with Mars being out of bounds at this time, we talked about that in the last month, um, it, it really adds to, I know, it, I know it's Mars and Saturn together, but Sagittarius and uh, the square to Neptune, it, it is about breaking through boundaries somehow. So that, that's the danger part, isn't it? Like how far people will go. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. It's really about knowing there's danger ahead and moving toward it anyway. I think that that is one of the wonderful things about Sagittarius. And the Mars out of bounds in Sagittarius conjoined Saturn shows that even though there is danger, and Saturn demands that you face that danger prudently, Mars and Sagittarius represents the result of having courage in the face of danger and to go forward anyway toward a greater tomorrow. It is, I think it's not as wicked 
as many of the conjunctions we've seen, and certainly the retrograde Mars through Scorpio, the early part of 216, was really, really evil in the sense that it really crippled people on a lot of emotional levels. And so the Mars Saturn is in Sagittarius, and now that Mars is moving ahead of Sagittarius and out of bounds, it is allowing itself to. That's what I, I, I that's how I'm looking at it anyway. Because if you look at anything you do in life, if you face it with prudence and courage, you're going to be all right. And no matter what it is. Yes. So I, I, that's, you know, that, that's how I'm feeling about it. And the fact that Virgo is underneath it all, and it's a huge stellium in Virgo we're dealing with. That's a very, very powerful stellium. And it was that Jupiter is in detriment. And it's not as, and Venus and Jupiter at the, at the end of August, Venus and Jupiter are both conjoined, and they're not, and the Venus is in fall, and Jupiter is detriment. So we don't have the most powerful use of those planets. But still, whenever there's Jupiter, whenever there's Venus, there are options. And in yes. Virgo, maybe they're more narrow, but they are, there are options. And that's how I think that this conjunction is not as evil as it could have been. Thanks for saying that. Sometimes I think, yeah, the, the information that we get about this type of thing, yeah, it has to be cleared up like that. So, yes, Virgo Virgo is much, you know, Virgo Sagittarius Pisces, where it's all about adapting to what's going on as well, the mutable signs. I, 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 I couldn't agree more. I think that mutability is, as you say, adaptability. The danger in it lies that you get advice from so many different people you don't know what to follow mm. because that's what mutability is. But to have such a strong stellium in Virgo this time, even though the planets of Venus and Jupiter are weak, uh, the Mars itself is strong. Because it is moving into the uh, Aries decadence as soon as it finishes its conjunction with Saturn. So Mars is, has strength to survive yeah. the threat of death. Uh -huh. which that's what Mars Saturn always is. Yes, right. It's the, the threat of death. Uh -huh. And it's, it's like Superman being hit with kryptonite. Because <laughs> it's a kryptonite. It's a crippling thing that happens, but Mars moving into the Aries decadate on Wednesday, August 24th, which, of course, it is already for you guys, is Mars regaining its strength. Yes, okay. Well, I, I do see the connection, you know, the conjunction Mars and Saturn. Saturn's always about strengthening the planet as well. Like, it, it might threaten to weaken it, but um, as you say, at this at this stage of, of Mar the Mars cycle and being in fire and the decanate, it's, it's really quite strong. So it is about mastering what is going on for everyone at this time in their lives. I have a perfect example of that. Uh, the son-in-law of a very good friend of mine, 30 years old, uh -huh. was just about to become a pol policeman when he was struck down with Guillain-Barre disease. And he was paralyzed from head to toe last October. Wow. And just now, he has beaten what no one else could ever think he would beat. He's now already been released from the hospital, and his goal is to run the marathon a year from now. Oh, fantastic. So, it's, so that's an incredible story of what happens to people when they think they're down and out. And then something turns around and they make it. Yeah. And th that comes just on before. This is a very intense eclipse that we're coming up on in early September. And I can't pretend that it's not a serious one because it's the sun and moon opposing. The sun and moon conjunct the north node opposing mm -hmm. Neptune and the south node, which, is, which are conjunct. 
mm-hmm. and square to the Mars and Saturn, leaving Gemini as the empty space. So wherever you have Gemini on your horoscope, you're going to be focused to be able to coalesce and integrate all of the conflicting energies of the Pisces, Virgo, uh, Sirius, uh, to just Sagittarius. And so Gemini becomes the, the focus of all the force and all of the intensity that is coming through that eclipse comes out through Gemini. Mm-hmm. And so Gem- Gemini, is good. wherever you have Gemini in your horoscope and in the coming year, is 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 going to be a, a strong focus in all your energy. But to have the Sun, North Node, Venus, Jupiter, and now, of course, Regulus is there. But uh, that's a very powerful struggle to remain sane when so many things around you are crazy and going wild. Keep your wits about you. The thing is that the Pisces is so seductive and the Pisces is so necessary because you can't just live a life of diligence like you're some girl in Catholic school. Yeah. The fact is you have to. I mean, that's what the Virgo is. It's it's like the Catholic school. It is in school girl. But also you have another side to you, no matter what sign you are. And the sign is yearning for mystery, yearning for uh, romance, yearning for all the forbidden things you're not supposed to do, including drugs and alcohol. Those are pastimes that can get a hold of you and kill you. Yeah. So there has to be a balance in this eclipse between your wish to be committed to a healthy, hygienic, sane life and the fact that everybody has a little naughtiness in them and they have to live it out. Yes, that's right. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm all for that because um, I get bored too quickly with um, doing everything how it's, you know. I mean, just even organising, uh, you know, so much that I do for the CIA. Yes, the times out, the retreats, the the away from, from the everyday um, is so important as well. Just, you know, whichever way. And that's where, and, the, and, and, and Virgo is the everyday life that needs to be strengthened because there has been a loss of focus. Yeah. And there has been a, there's been a leaning too much toward escapism. Uh-huh. And the fact that there's such a huge stellium uh, uh, in Virgo is saying you've got to come back to your real commitment in life. What is it yes. that you love to do and that is a, a service to other human beings? That's and you must strengthen that part of your life now. That's what this eclipse is about, is about helping your fellow men and women in the world and becoming more aware of what is happening to this planet. That's another aspect of the Virgo thing, is that so many lies are being told to us by media, weather, government. There's so many lies being told, and the Virgo stellium is to, means You've got to pierce through those lies and realize that everybody on this planet is in danger. And this planet, the Earth is a horse. The Earth is in your horoscope, too. The Earth is a planet. And the Virgo is about reminding ourselves that we owe this planet something because we've taken a lot from it. Yes, definitely. Um, The interesting thing is, um, you know, as you say, I, I often ask the agents that come on about, you know, the month ahead, so the sun's going through Virgo. It's, it's the highlight of, of the month as well with eclipses and so forth. Um, if Virgo had a superpower, I think you've actually answered this already, but, um, you know, what would it be? What, what, would, what would be the superpower of Virgo? Ah, <laughs> uh, good question. I think the superpower of Virgo is it's, Ability to reduce complexity to the simplest terms. Mm-hmm. It can be a detriment too because they, they they may see things narrow, but the clarity that with which they can pierce any mystery is what they're here to do. I think the superpower of Virgo is not its innocence that it clings to way too long. 
Mm-hmm. The superpower, the superpower of Virgo, is its ability to bring clarity on a rational level. Yeah, to any, any complex situation, yeah. and that's why it always there's no such thing as a Virgo without Pisces. <laughs> it's an axis. That's what this nodal axis is about. Yeah, People, you know, Virgo is not that clean, by the way. Oh, I you know, I know. <laughs> no, it's not. It changes its underwear when company. <laughs> That's right. Um, oh, I agree. I, I, I definitely agree. And and how determined it can be, and um, you know, diligent. All those words, um, analytical. We all need to have that in our lives in order to make it work. Otherwise, we're just lost swimming around. And with any, well, we sometimes. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to, it's like in astrology, any polarity is important, isn't it? Like I'm teaching astrology to students, so, you know, you can't know one sign without the other half or, you know, with the exactly other Exactly, because, yeah, exactly, because uh, Pisces is there to drop, to spill coffee on Virgo's map. <laughs> to test it. Because you can't. You can't do things only rationally because there's no inspiration in that. Uh huh. You also have to ha- you ha- you require the Pisces sensibility, which is by by it sort of feels which way to go. Yeah. And yeah, Virgo right. does not like that. Virgo tries to turn the lights on all the time, and Pisces turns them off. Yes. But that's really. That's really what you have to be able to do as a Virgo is you have to learn to live with the lights on and off. Uh-huh. But it's strength right now. Right yeah. now, its strength is in its rational power. That's right. And in its purity. And the best story of Virgo is not about criticism or judgmentalism at all. It's not about that. The best side of Virgo is in its ability to uh, perceive with absolute purity, like if you ever see a diamond or something that's really pure, that shows the Virgo. The Virgo is able to take all of the colors and all of the facets of, of the colors and put everything together in a way that other people can't do. So its ability to synthesize is really more what it's about, not about criticism and all those things where you read all that stupid stuff, that's, yeah. you know, it's just, all those stereotypes don't work. Yeah. But it really does live apart. It does live apart. It is the hermit card, after all. That's right. And it is seeking, it's seeking enlightenment, it's seeking truth, and it certainly does need its alone time because it is, the, it is, it is about mind, and it's, it, really is, it really is Vulcan. And when, you, when I first started studying astrology, I remember that it was with the Rosicrucians and I think some other uh, earlier ancient stuff, ancient material, claimed that Vulcan ruled Virgo, and Vulcan was a planet that was closer than Mercury, and had already been absorbed by the Father or the Son, and that, as all the planets would eventually be. Uh-huh. But that's, you know, Vulcan was said to be Virgo. So when Star Trek came out, and they had Vulcan as the ultimate um, rationalist, even though it wasn't from the solar system. It was very clever anyway. But whatever it is, it's really about its, its purity and its power of synthesis. And it means keep your head about you. Yes. Don't get totally drunk <laughs> on life. Yes. And take it to an extreme. It's afraid of life. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And that's... That's the danger. It's a, it's a, it's cynicism. It's cynicism is so great sometimes that it will do what it, you know, Virgos will do a lot for you. And then if you disappoint them, they will say, after all I did for you, they're big blamers. Right. They're big, you know, they're big blamers. Well, so I was fine until you came along, even though they're desperate for the contact. <laughs> so I think that it, to, to, to remain a healthy, and powerful Virgo, you have to have the power of synthesis and rational, but never think that you own, yet you know it all, because the, the, uh, one of the wonderful traits of Virgo is humility. Yes. And one of the worst characteristics is, is to think that it, it's, 
is shaking a finger at you saying, I told you so. Uh -huh. But the best side of it, the best side of it, and stuff that we really need to hang on to now is a, when I say a critical ability, I mean an ability to assess the situation, yeah. but not judge it. Yes. Good point. I mean, it's everyone's learning all of this at the moment with that stellium in, in Virgo. So even if you aren't a Virgo, um, it's still, you know, being impressed upon you. And with Jupiter and Mercury conjunct there, um, as you say, yeah, watch for watch out for making too many judgments because Jupiter's in detriment. Mercury's about to go retrograde. Um, and Mercury is the ruler of, of Virgo as well. So, so it's a real... Some people wonder about that, though. Oh, really? Some people wonder about it. Yeah, some people do. I've had some discussions with colleagues that they believe Mercury belongs to Gemini and Ceres or other, other asteroids belong in Virgo. We're not going to get into that now because it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a philosophical question. I'm not really sure of the answer either. But I also give Mercury to Virgo as Ptolemy did and, and the ancient. So for yeah. now, I, we say it is because yeah. it really is a discriminating ability. But it's the beauty to me of an evolved Virgo is is a not just a selfless uh, masochistic servant, but uh -huh. somebody who has the ability to help their fellow men and women. Yeah. And not ask a lot in return, just for the love of being uh, relevant and useful. Yeah, and greening up the planet and keeping it healthy. And we are a reflection of our environment and how we adapt to our environment. I love the word intelligence because intelligence or one of the meanings of intelligence is those that are, 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 are most able to adapt to the environment. So That's, um, what, it, that's what attention beings are supposed to do, but there's yes. different kinds of intelligence. Yeah. Pisces has a lot of intelligence, even though it doesn't even want to take a test in school. <laughs> it has a lot of another kind of intelligence. Sure. And Sagittarius has his own form of intelligence. Intelligence is not necessarily relegated to one sign, but to how any individual is able to tap into his or her own creativity based on his planet, based on their planetary positions, yeah. and use it in a creative way for a productive life. Yeah, well, that you know, that's it. Yes, as you said earlier, like, what's the best way we can be of service to be, you know, helping healing ourselves? You know, first of all, ourselves. We have to be healthy in order to heal the world. So, so it starts from within, and that's a real Virgo part as well. You know, the the S well, we start. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, when we start to see, when we start to see what's being done to this planet. That's another aspect of Regulus now in Virgo. It's going to be thousands of years mm. where we have to develop what, because people are going to get really sick from what's going on in, this, in, the, in the world of food that we've been fed, the yeah. medications we've been fed. A return to purity is necessary to clean the inside of the human body and the outside of the planet. Yeah. So I think that's, that's an awakening that's got to happen. Yeah. And yeah, and the the awakening, you know, I mean, it continues. There's there's going, you know, there's more and more. We can't pinpoint it to one time. It's it's we've opened up, you know, we've opened up to it. Now it continues, and it's a long process. So the yeah, the green. I hope so. Planet. I hope you're. I hope you're right. I hope you're <laughs> right because I don't think that as an astrology community, I don't think we have heard many outcries against the media, against the weather people who are not even telling us the truth. I've just spent a summer in New York, and it's not like a summer I've ever spent. Really? And you can't just yeah. say this is natural. It's not natural. Yeah. Somebody is really monkeying with the weather. Yeah. And the thing is, I, it's never told to us. Nothing is told to us that, you know, the pharmaceutical companies are telling us that we should take these drugs. And, we don't, and most people, and I will say this is true, most people don't even read the indications of the drugs they're given by doctors. Yeah. They just take them because the doctor said so. And I think as an astrology community, it's important for us, and this is, a, you know, the time of Virgo. It is the time for us to start asking questions of the media, the government, the weather people. Hey, what's, I drove those weather people crazy the last eight months. I was texting them. They must have thought I was a crazed fan. 
but because I knew it wasn't normal what was happening. Yeah. And they can't say this is just climate change. I've lived on the earth a long time since the mothership left, dropped me off and left. <laughs> I've lived on the earth. I've, li I've lived here a long time, so I know some patterns are changing. Yes. But I'm not 100,000 years old that I would see something this big going on. Yeah. I mean, last night it was, it was something like 15 here. This is August. Right. It's yeah. 15 here, and it's going up to 30 um, this weekend. Yeah. And that's fine for maybe, inter you know, between seasons sometimes. But not in the summertime. This is still summer in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. And it never rained all summer in New York City, just very, very little bit. It's, it's, I, and, and all over the country and all over the world, I, I have people who watch these things, too. And we see that something's going on, and we're not being told. Yeah. There was a, what the hell was it today? A snake was found, and a snake was found in America, and what was it, as long as something. I mean, they're finding all kinds of animals. Some good things are happening, too. Animal communication, by the way, with Virgo, uh -huh. animal communication is going to be so fantastic in the next 50 years that not just between animals and humans, which I believe is going to happen. I think people will go into the veterinary business with Virgo, so strong with Regulus, and, and uh, they'll be able to communicate with animals in ways that we haven't yet. But I've been watching on YouTube and Facebook certain things that animals are doing with each other, certain communications, which is phenomenal. So yeah. that there's an evolution. It's not all bad that's happening. There's no. an incredible evolution among the animal kingdom, yeah. in the animal kingdom, among the animals, that we should watch because we are, we're learning about communication in ways that we never have. And that's another wonderful thing that Virgo can help us do, is to, to be able to break down the barriers of communication, not only with animals, but on an interstellar level, which is really about to happen, not like next week. But I think we are really moving toward an interstellar community. And that's not just crazy and kookiness. And so I think not every bad thing is happening, but there's a lot of dark things that have been going on that need to be fixed on this planet. And, and just as e and equally, there are many amazing things going on in the animal world that I think they're, they're looking at more closely because as a human species, we are also in the process of evolution. And we're in the process of evolving. And one of the things that I love to see, you know, with the North Node and Virgo tra transiting is the fact that these, these, that, in that artificial intelligence is uh, being developed and can be, be used for peaceful purposes as well as, as uh, the opposite. Yeah, wow. Definitely. I mean, we're always evolving, aren't we? And, and, and and we can't forget what's the good things that are happening as well. Otherwise, we'd just be, you know, falling apart in despair. <laughs> so, well, that's why astrologers, I think, need to be more active in the in the world. Uh -huh. And we live in a very isolated environment. We live marginally, and we don't really speak out uh, uh, either for or against enough as a, as a community. Uh -huh. I don't think we. Uh, you know, but I have friends in Australia from my last trip and before, and we are email we are emailing and Facebooking each other every day about new articles that are coming out, things that we're learning about the planet, things that we're learning about and uh, animal life and 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 the condition of the planet, how to make it better. So between the United States and Australia, in terms of me and my friends, anyway, we are really becoming more aware and more vocal to each other. And I think that as astrologers, we need to be more actively participating yeah. in the evolution, the process that is going on, and being more vocal about it. Oh, definitely, yeah, having, having a say about it. Well, yeah, we need, we need those voices, the confident voices that, that will, um, you know, stand up and write about it and that type of thing. I agree, I agree, yeah. I agree. Um, and, you know, not everyone's so, so confident with that, but I, I think we'll get there. Um, did you know that the CIA, our CIA, has um, the sun at zero Virgo? No. Oh, wow, you do? Yes, we do. Well, that means that, that you mean that, that Regulus is on your sun now. That's right, yeah. Um, now, when, when I 
bought the name as a web name years ago in 2005, I was still studying astrology. So I, I didn't elect the chart. I just did it because it was time to do it. Um, and then, you know, of course, I've learned so much more. And I went, oh, wow, we've got our sun at zero regulus, uh, at zero Virgo. Um, and so, I mean, look, we have attracted the astrologers. I mean, most astrologers are some kind of healers. That's wonderful. And as Agent 111, I would be happy to join with other people in CIA to be more vocal about what's going on in the planet and to make sure that it, be that it becomes healthy and pure again. Is that the goal of Zero Virgo? Definitely. Um, all, all of those things, Michael. So it just, you know, it I, I don't know if it's an article or we could do more more YouTube clips. There's so many things that, that can be done. So I, I always encourage the agents. We are, you know, we have got a great fan base and a lot of followers. So, and that is our purpose, to use astrology to guide us as we would an individual. You know, I agree. So I, that's really on. great. Yeah. So, I mean, it's wonderful to have your voice as part of it as well, um, Michael. I'm happy, to have, I'm happy to have been on because it's great that you did this. Yeah, okay. Well, it, may, it makes sense. Regulus is on. Regulus is the first magnitude star on the ecliptic, and it's having moved into Virgo in 2012, changes the whole paradigm from royalty to common women. Virgo is the common woman. Right, right, and Leo is Leo is the royal man. And the, and for the Queen to now say, the Queen of England, that if a girl is born, she's still in line for the for the for the throne, that was a big change that happened in two thousand twelve and two thousand thirteen. Yeah, because right. regular direct the world more toward the common woman than the royal man. And you know, now I really do have to go, so well, Michael, thanks so much for being with, with us today and sharing your wise words. And um, uh, We had a great conversation. That's what I love to do with you. Fantastic. Sorry we didn't see you in, like as a, as a picture. but um, Well, thank you because you know what? I have a face for radio. Good, good. Everyone, everyone um, knows you well, um, and you're a great voice in the astrological world. And we look always look forward to hearing your insights. So, again, thanks, Agent One One One, and we'll um, talk to you soon. Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay, all the best. Bye. All right. So Michael had to go, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you with this image of. Um, being the master of, of our universe. That's why we do astrology in the end um, is to see what's coming up, to see how how best we can handle it. Um, of course, an astrologer's job is to, um, to alert everyone to these things, especially through our work on social media and so forth. Um, the, more, the more aware that we are of what's going on, the better we are equipped to handle it, how to deal with it. Um, and of course, again, that's why that's why we do what we do. But in in the bigger context um, with the CIA, we want you to get more involved and understand your astrology. In, instead of being waiting to be told, we believe that it's better for for everyone or more people to know more about their own astrology. And then in that context, um, we're much more connected as a collective about what's going on in the world as well. Um, so as as one of our our, uh, new agents, Adam Summer, um, in his podcast this week called it, you know, Mark, be the master of your universe. Um, it's very suited to what's coming up in this Virgo time as well. Um, so, of course, there's a lot more information on our website um, with with all of this. Um, this is only a taster for, for the month ahead so that um, it entices you to want to connect to us more, know more astrology. Um, do join our membership either as a gold star, silver star or as a monthly member it's a really good deal for you to learn a whole lot more astrology it's our kickstarter program it's our patreon drive it's all of those things so we really appreciate you joining up um, we're, of course we're always available for astro consultations um, we have some great retreats coming up yeah for now thanks for being here and all the best to all of you for, for a pretty pretty full-on month ahead. But um, as, as we've explained, um, it's not as bad as you think. So master your universe with, with your own great, great ideas and intelligence um, and awareness. Um, and I'll see you next time.
Thanks, everyone. Bye.